Yeah. All right, so what did you say, uh, Luke? Luke? Start with what? 19. 19. Is this the one where you have to draw the thing? Yeah. Yes. Uh, for problem, problem number 19, you are given the task of drawing a a uh, hexagon that has some specific things about it. Uh, the first thing they tell us is we need two consecutive sides that are five centimeters long. Those of you that are not good at the whole ruler thing, it's got two sides, okay? This side right here says CM, that's centimeters. This side right here with the bigger ones on it says inches, that's inches. We want the, uh, what do you need? Oh, okay. Um, do you want the uh, smaller ones? Do uh, Centimeters. And so, since the first thing it says, is uh, five, back, okay. uh, five centimeter side. What you should probably do to start with is draw a segment which is five centimeters long. Okay, and let's label that so all the world knows that's five centimeters. Okay, now what? Make another one. And it says consecutive five centimeter sides. But let's till, till, let's kill two birds with one stone. It not only says two consecutive five centimeter sides, but it says three consecutive 130 degree angles. So let's not just make a five centimeter side. Whoa, what just happened? Let's also make that five centimeter side coming off at a 130 degree angle. How do you like that? Which number is this? Which one? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So I'm going to draw my uh, five centimeter side over here. That also has it's at 130 degree angle. Okay. I don't know what just happened there. It's a world gone crazy. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to label this as also being five centimeters, and I'm going to label this angle as being 130 degrees. Okay. So I have two consecutive five centimeter sides, and I have one 130 degree angle. Where should I put my other 230 degree angle? Right next to each other, yeah. So I'm going to do, yeah, like Nate said, I'm going to put one off this direction from the left hand side, and you could do it a different way if you wanted, and it would still work out. And I'm going to put another one this direction that's 130 degrees as well, and I will label these as each 130. Okay? Yeah, that might not fit on your paper, and if that's going to be a problem, then just sort of wing it a little bit. As long as we get the general idea, we're okay. Does it have to be exact? It does not have to be exact. When I correct these papers, I will not get out a protractor and measure all of your angles and a ruler to measure all your sides. We're just looking for the general impression yeah. of correctness. All right, so I have three 130-degree angles. I've got two 5-centimeter sides. But I do not have a hexagon. What do I have to do to make it a hexagon? What require? Which one? Six. Hexagon has six sides. So I've got four. So I can't just connect the two sides that I have there because that would only give me a pentagon. So I'm going to just put a random point out there somewhere. It really doesn't matter where. And then I am going to complete my hexagon by connecting the two sides that I have left to that. That point doesn't matter, no, because we weren't told anything specific about these remaining angles or sides or anything like that. So as long as I have this stuff in here already, then the rest of it's going to be 
Okie dokie, no matter how I do it. I? Twenty who? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah. Twenty-three. Hola, Senor Schubach. De nada. Uh, I do. Uh, as soon as you guys are done, will you pass your pro doctor's form? I only need a couple. Here, shoes. Here, shoes. Take mine. I don't want to. That's all I need. Thank you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Appreciate it. So number 23 uh, says you have this monkey shape, and the perimeter of the shape is a total of 94 meters, and then you have some uh, information about the shape as well. So we need to figure out what the side uh, length CD is and what side length AB is, okay? So what is some uh, information that we can add to this diagram that we know that's not labeled loop? Give it a try. No, just try. What did you say? I said seven, right? Seven is incorrect. But it says right there, seven. What is some information that we can add to our diagram that is not on the diagram already? Ooh, um, Matt? Uh, oh, you see the two lines? I do see the two lines. Those uh, things are the same. These two and these two are the same. And Correct. Are the same. Are the same. Are the same. Okay, what he's talking about is since this side right here has two lines and this side right here has two lines, what's true about these two sides? They're the same. So if this is x plus 8, then this must be x plus 8 also. And then the other thing that he was saying is since this has one line and this has one line, what's true about these two things? They're also the same. So this is x minus 3 as well. Okay? So if I add up all the sides of this polygon, how many x's will I get as I go around? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to say that 4x plus, now let's add up the numbers. What's 8 and 8? 16. Plus 16? 32. 32 minus 3 is 29. 29 minus 3 is 26. 26. So 4x plus 26 is what I would get if I add up all the sides. What does that have to equal? <coughs> Excuse me, 94, because they told us the perimeter is 94. How do I solve that simple two-step algebraic equation? Okay. Yeah. Subtract, Five, subtract four. 26 from 94, okay. dividing that by four. That's okay, good. So 26 or 94 take away 26 is 68. And then he says divide by four. So uh, x is 17. So uh, eight. That's why it was in your book. It's not a yeah. seven. It's a well, seven. Which one did I read? That was seven. But that is not my answer. Twenty-one. What does the question ask? Find the lengths of the Find the lengths of the sides. Yeah, it doesn't say figure out what X is. Now you have to plug it in. Right. So go ahead and plug it into CV, and what do you get? Twenty-five meters. Now plug it into AB and what do you get? 14, 14 meters. Okay? What is it? Abstract algebra. We have to prove that. That board equals 14. Yeah, abstract algebra is pretty crazy stuff. Can you show us an example? No, sorry. Is it huge? Uh, how would you prove that, though? Um, okay, and then what else do we want? Anything else? What did you say? 25? 26. 25. 
25 and 27, and then we'll call it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to draw three lines, A, B, C, D, and E, F. And the first thing we know is that A, B is parallel to C, D. And uh, this is a good thing for you to know. Oh, I know you don't know. We have talked about how you show the two segments are congruent. We have talked about how you show two angles are congruent. We have also talked about how you show two lines are perpendicular. The way you show the two lines are parallel is by putting a little uh, arrow thingy like that on them. So as soon as I put those on there, even though it does not look like those lines are parallel, because those little arrow thingies are on there, now you know that they are, okay? Uh, and you cannot assume that they are unless it uh, specifically says so. Okay, so those are parallel. And then they also want CD to be perpendicular, is what that little symbol, this thing right here means perpendicular, uh, to CD. So I'm going to draw, does that look perpendicular? Close enough? Close enough for government work? And I'll put a little thing there so we know for sure. And then I need to label that as EF. Okay? So that's what that drawing looks like. The two lines are parallel and then the other ones are perpendicular. Uh, just as an aside, if EF is perpendicular to CD, what do you think is true about uh, EF and AD? E, uh, perpendicular. It's probably perpendicular to AB. We don't know that, but we will uh, figure that out pretty soon. All right, and then 27, this is an awesome one. We are going to start with four lines, and we are going to explore whether uh, they can cross in a certain number of ways. So is there a way for me to draw four lines so that they will never cross? Like, that. like this. Now, what has to be true about these lines? They have, to be parallel. they have to be parallel, and they don't really look parallel, but you can see that if they were, they would never cross. So, zero points of intersection cannot be done. Yes. How would I have to rearrange these so that there would be only one point of intersection? So, two parallel and two perpendicular. No, that wouldn't work. No, we can't. Any ideas? No. <laughs> Here you go. We can change these so that they all intersect at the same point. That's what you guys are genius. Oh, you did not say that. You had some crazy thing about perpendicular or who knows what. You're making up words back there. Okay. So, yes, you can do that in that way right there. That means uh, that crossing only one time will work. Okay? How about crossing exactly two times? No. Maybe. No. No. Just straight up no. Maybe. No, because if I took this line right here and tried to scoot it that way, as soon as I move a little bit, how many intersections do I have? Three. Okay? Um, and even if I, well actually that would be four, one, two, three, four, so yeah, you can't, uh, can't do that. So two intersection points is a no. How about three? Yes. I'm going to go yes, you just did it. No, I didn't. I said I did, but I was wrong. That's oh, actually okay. four. How is it four? Because the one in the middle. One, two, three, four. Okay. I mean, all that. Yeah. Okay. okay. What? Okay, good. So if I take this line here and rotate it so that it is parallel to this one, right? Now I have one, two, three intersection points, and these two will never cross because they're parallel, so I will not add another one. So the answer to can they cross three times is. Yes. This one right here? No, because these are parallel. Okay, so they will never cross. What? You know you put the little symbols on there? Okay, yeah, I should have put those because I just told you about those. 
I should have said, there we go. Now that we know those two lines are parallel, now do you believe me? Someone. Someone. Okay. That's good. Uh, all right, so there's four. How about five? Um, yes. Oh. Yes, there is. Oh. Yes. You tell us. You can, um, that one right here. Um, yes. This one right here? Yes, I will move it down. Move it down. Oh, look, there's five. Nice, there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five. So five is also a yes. Okay, what about six? Did you do four? I did four. Yeah, you can. You can? How? This one? No. This one? Yeah. Okay. Like that? Sure. Right. So it intersects with this one. So they're not parallel anymore. Now they're crossing. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, Jake. Why do you say no? Okay. So it turns out all of those are possible except for two. You can have less than two. You can have more than two. But you can't have two. You can call break or you can go see it. All right. Time's up. So leave it there for a second. Get it? It's a little joke. Okay, funny looking or funny smelling?